Hello, my name is Mark Piller. In this video, I will give you an overview of web warp integration with Sapphire Steel Amethyst. If you're not familiar with Amethyst, it is a Visual Studio based IDE for the Flash platform. You can use Amethyst to develop Flash or Flex based applications directly in Visual Studio. Let me show you how that works. Here I have Visual Studio 2010. Uh, Amethyst is, also, is already installed into it. Uh, but it also is available for Visual Studio 2008. First of all, I'm going to create an amethyst based project. So I'm going to into File, New Project, and I'm going to select one of the installed temp templates in the amethyst cat category. It is going to be a Flex 4 based application. So here I select Flex 4, Flex 4 application, and I'm going to call it My Flex App. Click OK. Since uh, this is the first time I create a flex based application using Amethyst, I need to select an SDK. And I'm going to go into f computer and locate my SDK. Select Flex 4. And now that SDK is selected, Amethyst creates a project. And it's going to look just like a flex based project in a Flash Builder. Uh, just to make sure that everything works fine, I'm going to compile this project. The, the project now is successfully built. You can double click the MXML file, which is open here. It is also linked to the uh, action script code, which is imported through this FX colon, colon script. And uh, it is essentially bare bones flex based application. Since we are in Visual Studio and we also provide web or based templates for Visual Studio. I'm going to create my server side application with web or of course, uh, in the context of the same solution. To do that, uh, I'm going to right click and say, add new project. And it's going to be a Visual C sharp project. Uh, so we're going to expand Visual C sharp, select web. And here we have a web or enabled website. And I'm going to call it my web or site as the project name. So now Visual Studio imports Web Orb enabled website template. And here's my Web Orb enabled site. I'm going to select it as the startup project and uh, also going to select Web Orb console as the startup page. The, the, the template automatically includes a sample service. So here it is under app code sample service. Let me just change this text. I'm going to say dot mad returned and whatever the argument that is passed into this method. So there is a public class with just one method that essentially echoes back the, the value that it gets from the client side. Let's build this website and run it. And since we selected Web Orb Console as the startup page, once the site runs, it will open the console. And we can verify that the site is working properly. The management console is now loaded. And if we go into the services tab, expand .NET assemblies, we can navigate to our service, which is located right here. And here's the echo method. And let's just test it. Let's say hello there. Click Invoke, and now the service returns the value. Now that we know that the site is working, let's leave this browser page up and return to Visual Studio. Specifically in the Flex project in Visual Studio, uh, the Amethyst project, there is a very cool integration with Web Warp that I would like to show. Notice there is a Services node. If I right-click the Services node, you can add a Web Warp service. Let's click that. Amethyst opens up Web, Web Warp Service Browser, and here we can enter the address of our Web Warp server. If you have a Web Warp server installed elsewhere, you can enter the address of that server right here. In this case, since we already have a Web Warp server as our server side project, we can enter the address of that server into this field. To get the address of the Web Warp server, we can either go to the management console, which is running here, 
and select this address. Alternatively, since we have since this is running in, in the development server, we can open the development server window through this and get this address. This is going to be the same address as we see in the browser. So I'm going to paste this address and click load services. So this the service browser connects to your instance of WebOrb and loads all available services. And we can browse these services right in Visual Studio. Since we have this sample service deployed in Visual Studio, we are going to connect to that service. And there's a variety of different code generators available, which will generate code and import it into your Flex project. I will go with a basic Flex Remoting Action Script 3 code generator. Click Import Service. Let me show you what happened. So now my Flex project in Visual Studio contains the code that was generated by WebWorb and Amethyst, and, and that code is part of my Flex project. So here, to inspect this, I'll double-click this action script file, and then notice this is all the code that will enable my Flex project to communicate with WebWorb. So here, there is a method that will do the actual remoting method invocation and there is a bindable data model and all the configuration files which are required to establish this communication are also added to the to the project let's create a very basic application that uses the generated code and communicates with web work i'm going to open this mxml file and for the simplicity's sake switch to the design view there's also a very nifty toolbox. So here, since my what my ser service does, just to remind you, it accepts a string and returns a string. What I'm going to do in the Flex application is uh, get a value from the user through the input box. Let's add text input. Put it right here. And put a label right here which will say enter value. And then we'll also will add a button that will perform the actual method invocation. And the button label will be send to server. And finally, there's going to be a label which will show the data which we get back from the server. And I'll also put a label that will say server returned. So now what I need to do is to wire this button to the actual method invocation. And for that, I'm going to switch back to the code view. So this is all the MXML. Let's hide this toolbox. We don't need it anymore. Now if we click the sample service.as, which is the generated code, it actually gives you sample code that you can use to import the generated code into your project. So I'm going to use that. And notice in the MXML, the, the MXML already imports this action script code for all the all the sources, which we can use to extend. So what we added is a, a bindable model, and the model will contain results from the remote method invocations, as well as the actual service proxy. So this sample service action script class is a proxy for the remote.net service. Let's also add a method. Data to 
server. Notice it has exactly the same method as the method on the remote side. So this will perform the remote method invocation. When the result is received by Flex, the code, the generated code, will, will automatically update this model object, which means that on, on, in the UI, I can bind the label that displays the data received from the server to the property in this particular model. And the property is, is called echo result. And in order to display the received value in the flex application, I need to bind my label with this particular field. We'll return to MXML. And this is the label that I need to enable data binding for. And I'm going to do this through model echo result. The only other thing that I need to do is to wire the button to the method which was declared in the action script code. And that's very easy. Click. Send data to server. I believe it was the name. And we need to pass the value of that input field which we created. Let's call it my input. My input dot text. Let's compile this flex application. Okay, build succeeded. So now we're ready to run the project. I'm going to set it as the startup project and click run debug visual studio launches the browser i'm going to enter a te uh, text value this is a test click send to server and now we got a value back from the server which is displayed right here in the label and this this is a round trip between Flex application built with Amethyst in Visual Studio and a .NET service, which is also part of a .NET project in Visual Studio. And this is very powerful because I do have a single solution which contains both server-side project and Flex client-side project in the same solution. So this concludes the video uh, describing the, the integration between Amethyst and WebWorp. Uh, for Visual Studio. Next, uh, please uh, check out the video that describes uh, how to debug both Flex applications and .NET applications from Visual Studio and go back and forth from Flex to .NET in the debugger without ever leaving Visual Studio.